Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is regenerative extension. Our objective is to examine regenerative extension circuits that serve to increase actuator speed. This lecture operates under the assumption you can confidently calculate volume, flow rate, and actuation time and speed with no outside assistance. If you haven't watched the hydraulics math lecture yet, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, or are still hesitant in such calculations, please take the time to watch this lecture and or review this material. As you'll recall, the time to fully extend or retract a hydraulic cylinder is a function of two variables, flow rate and volume. Flow rate is a measure of volume per unit time, typically expressed in units of gallons per minute or liters per minute, whereas volume is expressed in units of cubic inches or cubic centimeters. Conceptually, this can be expressed as a three variable relationship of Q, flow rate, being equal to volume, V, over time, T. Permutations of this relationship should be trivial. Flow rate is volume over time. Volume is flow rate times time. Time is volume over flow rate. Given the disjoint in units, flow rate, volume, and time calculations often necessitate a unit conversion, doubly so when asked to express time in units of seconds. Put your understanding of this topic to the test with this introductory example problem. Given a cylinder with the following dimensions, calculate the time to fully extend the cylinder and the time to fully retract the cylinder given a constant flow rate of let's say 2.3 gallons per minute. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. First, let's perform some area and volume calculations since they're necessary initial steps. Given these dimensions, the cylinder has a cap end functional area of approximately 4.909 square inches. And the rod end has a functional area of approximately 4.123 square inches. Note the cap end area is a full circle and the rod end is a ring-like annular area equal to the area of the cap minus the area of the rod. Note the terms I'm using rod end versus rod. Do not confuse the two since it's essential to our later discussion. To fully extend the cylinder necessitates a volume of approximately 117.8 cubic inches be introduced into the cap end. To fully retract the cylinder necessitates a volume of approximately 99 cubic inches be introduced into the rod end. Note the cap end is a full cylinder and the rod end volume is a tube-like shape equal to the volume of the cap minus the volume of the rod. Again, pay close attention to the terms I'm using. Rod end versus rod. Do not confuse the two. Finally, let's convert our given flow rate to cubic inches per minute. Flow rate of 2.3 gallons per minute is equivalent to 531.5 cubic inches per minute. The ball, powder, and wadding are loaded now it's just a matter of lighting the fuse and making sure your musket is pointed in the right direction. Time equals volume over flow rate. To fully extend this cylinder given this flow rate, it would necessitate approximately 0.22 minutes or approximately 13.3 seconds. To fully retract this cylinder given this flow rate, it would necessitate approximately 0.186 minutes or approximately 11.2 seconds. Note how the act of fully retracting the cylinder took less time than to fully extend it because of the fundamental volume imbalance between the cap and rod end. This is always the case. If your calculations suggest otherwise, you are doing it wrong and you need to perform a tactical retreat and reassess your situation. Think about how variations in one quantity or another affect this relationship. If flow rate increased, it would take less time to fill the same volume. If flow rate decreased, it would take more time to fill the same volume. Conversely, given a constant flow rate, it takes longer time to fill a larger volume and less time to fill a smaller volume, hence the imbalance between extension and retraction speed. It makes sense. Let's now assume this system is limited to 400 PSI, and given these dimensions, we can now use Pascal's law to determine extension and retraction forces. Pascal's law states that the maximum extension force is approximately 1,963.5 pounds force, and the maximum retraction force is approximately 1,649.3 pounds force. 
Again, note the imbalance between extension and retraction forces because of the fundamental area imbalance between the cap and rod end. Given the same pressure, a cylinder will always exert more force at extension than at retraction because there is more functional area upon which pressure can act. Remember this. Note during normal extension, the cap end of a double acting cylinder is hooked to pressurized flow when the rod end is dumped to tank. Consider, however, a regenerative extension circuit where both ports of a fully retracted double acting cylinder are hooked to pressurized flow. Given equal pressure on the cap and rod end, what does the cylinder do? Does it extend, retract, float freely, or does it lock in place? Pause the lecture and think about this. Take your time and really think about it and don't just casually pick an answer. Use Pascal's law and our previous calculations to support your conclusion. If you're tracking, you should have predicted that this cylinder would extend. If you thought otherwise, I am super disappointed in you and call into question your understanding of Pascal's law and area calculations. So disappointed, in fact, I'm going to build a cage, put you in it, get the sharpest stick I can find, and spend all day poking you with it. Every time I poke you, I will remind you that force equals pressure times area. Given equal pressure and different functional area, there will be a force imbalance. The cap end has larger functional area and will exert more force. The rod end has less functional area and will exert less force. A double acting cylinder with equal pressure on both the cap and rod end will always extend. Given this system is limited to 400 psi, it can be shown that the cap end will exert 1,963.5 pounds force working to extend this cylinder, counteracted by the rod end exerting 1,649.3 pounds force working to retract the cylinder. Therefore, this cylinder will extend with 1,963.5 minus 1,649.3 or approximately 314.2 pound force. This is one way of calculating the extension force of regenerative extension circuits. However, the observant among you will notice that the quantity of excess functional area in the cap end is equal to the area of the rod. When you've got approximately 4.91 square inches acted upon by 400 psi working to extend the cylinder, opposed by approximately 4.12 square inches acted on by 400 psi working to retract the cylinder, you've in effect ultimately got 0.7854 square inches acted upon by 400 psi working to extend the cylinder. The functional area for a regenerative extension circuit is not the cap nor the rod end, but rather the area of the cap minus the area of the rod end, or more simply, the area of the rod. Use this picture to help you remember this. Again, Pascal's law states that force equals pressure times area. 400 times 0.7854 equals approximately 314.2 pounds force. Either way results in the cylinder exerting the same amount of force in regenerative extension mode. At first glance, the advantages of regenerative extension might seem dubious at best since it results in a cylinder exerting significantly less force than normal extension. However, when you step back and look at this system in terms of flow and actuator speed, the advantages are immediately recognizable. Recall that Pascal's law states pressure inside a confined fluid is experienced equally and undiminished in all directions. Flow into or out of a space, however, occurs whenever volume expands or contracts. Given we've demonstrated the double acting cylinder with both ports at the same pressure will always extend, note that as it does so, the cap end volume expands and the rod end volume contracts. The expanding cap end is essentially squeezing fluid out of the rod end, and given both parts are connected, this outgoing flow from the rod end is routed right back into the cap end, thereby augmenting input flow and increasing actuator speed, hence the name regenerative extension. Can you now dig regenerative extension on the same level that I do? Given there exists a volume differential between the cap end at full extension, 
from the rod end at full retraction. The observant among you will immediately recognize the missing piece that needs to be filled for the rod end to fully extend in regenerative extension mode is that of the rod only. This small space, in contrast to the full cylindrical cap volume, is the only flow requirement for full extension in regenerative extension mode. Again, given a constant flow rate and a much smaller volume, extension occurs much more rapidly than it would in normal mode. Granted, force is weaker, but actuator speed is dramatically increased. Given our example cylinder when hooked in regenerative extension mode, routes the tubular rod end volume of 98.96 cubic inches back into the fully cylindrical cap end volume of 117.81 cubic inches, this means only 117.8 minus approximately 99 cubic inches or approximately 18.85 cubic inches must be provided for the rod to fully extend in regenerative extension mode. This, by no matter of coincidence, is the cylindrical volume of the rod. Being a diameter of 1 inch, making an area of 0.7854 square inches extruded over a distance of 24 inches, ultimately yielding approximately 18.85 cubic inches of space that must be filled. Either calculation method is fine because both ultimately yield the same result, albeit some methods are quicker than others. Again, assuming a constant flow rate of 2.3 gallons per minute or 531.5 cubic inches per minute, this would result in extension time of only 0 0.035 minutes, or more appropriately, 2.1 seconds. In summary, regenerative extension exerts smaller force than normal extension, but extension occurs much more rapidly. The smaller extension force is a byproduct of the area imbalance between the fully circular cap and the ring-like rod end areas being exposed to the same pressure, such that the resultant force favoring extension is the input pressure times the area of the rod. The faster extension speed is a byproduct of the tubular rod end volume being routed back into the fully cylindrical cap end such that input flow only needs to fill the smaller rod volume. Given constant flow and a much smaller volume, extension time is much smaller and actuator speed is increased. Again, carefully note which terms I'm employing. Cap area rod area, rod end area, cap volume, rod end volume, rod volume. Do not be the person that shows up for a pre-lab quiz on this subject and says, I forgot the formula for regenerative extension. There is no formula for regenerative extension. Understanding regenerative circuits is only a matter of understanding the construction of double acting cylinders and how area and volume differences affect the observable results of Pascal's Law and flow calculations. Stay organized. By all means, draw a picture. Let's try this example problem on for size. Given a cylinder with the following dimensions, a cap diameter of 3 inches, a rod diameter of 1 and a quarter inches, and a travel length of 16 inches, calculate the maximum extension force and the time to extend in normal extension mode, and then calculate the same quantities again in regenerative extension mode, given pressure is limited to let's say 500 PSI, and flow rate is constant at 1.8 gallons per minute. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. Part one, normal extension mode should be well within your reach with no guidance. If it isn't, I've got a stout cage and a sharp stick with your name on it. For part two, regenerative extension mode, again recall that you must simply stay organized. The cap is different from the rod, which is different from the rod end. Draw a picture and stay organized. For those struggling or just sitting there with a dumb look on your face, here's a hint. Get to work calculating all the areas and the volumes first. You'll need these for all subsequent calculations regardless of mode, normal or regenerative. If you're tracking, you should have arrived at these results.